with everybody as y'all tap in. You know, we just getting ready. I'm ready to go live with y'all from the, for the heart gallery. You know, we back doing it virtual again. You know, we were, but this time we doing it virtual in a different way before we were bringing the artists in, you know, on the live. And now they just in here in the space with us. So we gonna all, you know, rock together. So we good over here? Yeah, that was we on over here. Mm -hmm. Then we recording over here. You know what I mean? We got a few guests in the building. You know, we even though you know they shut it down to where we couldn't have, so we we had it where 25 people could be in the building. Now it's limited to just 10, so we're gonna abide by the rules. You know, but we decided we would still do it in the space. We have the East White Oak Community Center, the historical East White Oak Community Center here in Greensboro, and we just you know for one wanted to still highlight the space. Still take the opportunity to connect with the artists, uh, the entrepreneurs, the builders, the, the history creators, you know what I mean, of our day into the future until. And uh, yeah, just, you know, have a conversation and chop it up with y'all real quick. So we're going to get started, you know what I mean, here shortly. You see the Copper Queen and the Copper Queen, I mean Copper King back here, you know, getting active. So we're going to be chopping it up here real shortly. Give me about uh, 52 seconds. Peace, peace, y'all. How y'all doing? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. We in here. Hey, I'm live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this message has been brought to you by. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We going live at the Heart Gallery, you know. So y'all tap in, catch these vibes. You know, drop some some thoughts, comments, questions, or whatever as we engage in this experience. And yeah, stay tuned. We about to be going live and direct. We're sipping live alkaline water. Namazi, Namazi um, is Zulu, and it means clean water. You know, all live alkaline water. You know, so it's a number of different things that we're gonna be coming to you with. You know, it's heavy energy, soul society, copper vibrations, the intellectual action there. The atmosphere, we hydrating the hood, we beautifying the block. It's a lot of different things we got going on within this collective. So, and it's beautiful to build with people that you know, uh, nation building as well. Let me get y'all right over here. Yeah, yeah. So, like I always do, if a picture says a thousand words, then I shall cram a gallery in a verse, or I can paint smiles all over her, or I can draw love all over earth, the heart gallery, mind, body, and soul. Another story is told, so here we go again. Floetic justice, this is poetry in motion. You would have thought that I was using Langston's pen. Well, it don't even take a whole day to see sunshine. And if art is the imitation of nature, when it rains outside, just know everything will be all right because something good shall grow later. See, I learned on life's campus that anything's a canvas. It's all in how you paint your vision. Just add some truth. Don't subtract your negatives. Multiply the positive before you see division. Or something like that. We all got stories. We can't subtract the negatives, you know, just in the way that the camera works. The negatives make for a beautiful picture. So we got to keep all of this energy flowing, you know what I mean? It's all from the soul, for the society, for the tribe. You know, so we got, a, you know, some amazing, you know, they're not just guests, though, you know what I'm saying? This is family, you know? So we got some amazing family members, you know, in here tonight, you know, to uh, share with y'all some of their expression, you know, how they get down, some of their work. We're going to get into some stories. Behind me, we have Copper Vibrations, the Copper Queen, the Copper King over here, you know, getting active. And, you know, you see them, let me step out of the way so you can see this live work, you know, that's going on right while we're here. Um, but what I love, you know what I mean, about them is they, they exemplify black love, you know what I mean, and how revolutionary it is, you know what I mean, whether it's for your soul, for your mind, for your business what teamwork, you know, looks like when you come together and do this thing the right way. I love how they operate, you know what I mean, in business. I love the jewels that they drop on, you know what I'm saying, me and anybody, you know, that's around. So I'm grateful for this opportunity to be able to share this moment. So we have Copper Vibrations. And um, if y'all want to, you know, introduce yourselves, you know, a little bit, you can, and then I get in asking some questions. Also, y'all, everybody that's live, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, if y'all have some questions, Feel free to ask your questions, you know, and we're going to try to get to as many as possible to uh, further, you know what I mean, create this experience and make it a monumental moment. So I'll be, you know, checking all of these devices to see what kind of questions y'all have, and we're going to tap in. So, bam. Peace, peace, family. Peace, peace. I am Nicole Hill. I'm the 
and I am the crystal queen, and this is my husband, the copper king. They call me CK, though. They call me CK, they call me CQ. Um, we have copper vibrations, we make custom handcrafted uh, jewelry utilizing precious gemstones and metals. Um, but Copper King has been more, he's always been into the uh, visual art side of things, but we haven't really pushed it. So as we move forward um, with Copper Vibrations, we're pushing more of the visual art side um, of himself. Because Copper King's a creative, and if you know him or connected with him, you know that he's always creative in some capacity. Whether it's movies, whether it's music, whether it's art, jewelry, he's just a natural um, creator. That's right. Uh, yeah, life is great, I like to say. Uh, smart work, I have to say a lot of different things just to keep everything going in the, in the direction we need it to go in. Uh, this piece right here, I'm still waiting for more inspiration, but I know my hair is going to be big, so I'm going to it's going to have a flow to it. My wife would like me to turn this into a, a table. We're going to, you know, pour the stuff over and make it thick and, and strong, and it might be a table or it might go on the wall. Like, like you know, it feels good to create and just tap into the energy of creating and just let it flow. And, uh... Copper Vibration has been around for a while, and we've been doing real well, and life is great. So this is a, a, a copper colored mermaid, it's a black mermaid. Um, a lot of people said that it gives them uh, the Moja vibes, um, but he, he just had the inspiration to create a, a mermaid. And so that's what he's doing, he's utilizing um, copper, resin, and uh, shells and stones. Um, so that's what you see being compiled uh, here together. And I can't wait to see what he's done. I, my goal is that it be a coffee table <laughs> when he's done. Um, and so I can't wait to see the finished product because it's not something that I want to sell really. Um, this is the first one. But he does a lot of different things. So um, this right here is just a piece of art. It's made easy. You sit on your floor, you can put it. Flowers in it, you can put ball in it, you can do whatever. It's just a decorative base. So um, I really was telling him one day, you should get some home decor. And that's what he decided to make. Um, this right here, I don't know if y'all can see this, but this is an aisle that you can see. Um, this is a piece that he made for me some time ago. Um, the stone in here is Septarian Nodule and Ammonite. Um, he used Ammonite stones for the eye and Septarian nodule um, for the body. Um, next up we have here is, this is a butterfly. Everybody loves butterflies and it's symboling transformation. Um, and this is just a little desk piece, sits on the desk like that to sit on your altar what have you these are some little copper men <laughs> this one even this is skeleton but he has braids and an earring <laughs> <laughs> that's some detail for you yeah he just want to show off his work right here this is just when the creativity is just flowing not like, only does they have the braids you know what i mean but he got them wrapped up like not even just like they ain't even just, a he got the wrap on them and everything <laughs> they actually have a ponytail on them so that's just something uh that he did create one day just messing around this was probably our most um light piece this is a replica of the most liked piece. But this is a Nipsey Hustle um, that we did. We like to call this the Hustle and Motivate. Okay. We got the tattoos on the face. Where you get your tattoos? <laughs> oh, it's really bad. It's really bad. I'm going to let him talk a little bit about where he gets the inspiration from. But this right here is a double-sided axe, as you can see. A lot of people say it gives them Sean Glow vibes. Hmm. Um, but it has red jasper 
uh, highlight and clear quartz in it. Um, where do you get your inspiration from to do pieces? Uh, I feel really connected to, to creativity. Like how I see it is like, like there's a sea, an ocean, and some of us could, can connect to that sea. You can't use it up, the water is infinite. And those, that, those of us that create, we're connected to that. And we like pull, we pull from it. We pull from this sea, from this ocean. And I have no doubt in, in the connection that, I, that I'm, I'm blessed with. Like I can literally create anything and I believe that. It might take me longer to do certain things, but if I work at it, and because that connection is just so, it's, it was always there. I always created my whole life. So do you see these pieces in your mind first, or do you just freestyle? Like, you know how to say like a rapper, do you write your lyrics down, or do you just let them flow when you get in the mood? I do both. Sometimes I just let it flow. I mean, we use crystals, so sometimes I just go with the the energy of the stone, I just let it flow and wrap it the way I feel like it needs to be wrapped or want to be wrapped. Uh, or sometimes I see a picture like the mermaid. The first mermaid I did was a charm for the poor lady. She, she sent me a picture. It was a painting picture and she wanted me to recreate it as a, something for the whip. So that's what I made. I made her a mermaid. and. So many people love the little mermaid. And so I was like, you know, that'll be it'll be lit if I make a, a wall piece. Because one of the one of my issues though was I was only seen as as a a, a jury maker, which is cool, but I'm you know, we, we graded in that. Whatever we do, we could do much more. And I don't want nobody to put me in a box. So these pieces that I'm working on is really the first time I'm, make, I'm making pieces this size. I never made pieces this size before. But the challenge is I want y'all to see me as somebody that made, you know, art. So instead of me sitting up here arguing with y'all, I can make art. <laughs> like, you know, I'm an artist too. You know, like, yo, I can. I can make a big canvas. You know, I was like, I'd rather just make it and then, you know, put myself in that, that position, put myself in that, that space you know, climb out of that box. I think that's just a very strong principle because people uh, people say they are a lot of things. Like, I initially started saying I was a copper queen just because I was around the copper. But I don't want really to twist copper, so to, for me to say I'm the copper <laughs> queen is a bit extra. So I thought about that, which is why I changed my name to the Crystal Queen. Um, Christmas is what I do, is what I know. Um, I work with them on a day-to-day -day basis. They're all programmed up here in my head. Um, so that's pretty much um, the lesson in all this. You're not what you say, you, you're what you do in actuality. So um, be found in doing the things that you say you are. And um, what's right. deep about what she said was, she said she was a crystal queen, or she called herself CQ before she actually became the Crystal Queen. And a lot of times we gotta say what we want and then actually, you know, make it happen. Don't just stay in the sense of, you know, saying, I could have said all the time, and I can make art pieces, I can make wall pieces, but I have to say it and then I actually have to create it. And then I need y'all to, you know, feedback and let me know if it's any good. <laughs> now you getting some fire signs and all that in there, yeah, like for real. That. Heavy energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, they they bringing it. You know what I mean, you got some some work over there. The owl, like I've, I've seen that one, and that was blowing my mind just seeing it. But the owl, like that, just to be able to even find the perfect crystals to even like <laughs> get the um, detail of the eye. You know what I mean? But then looking at nipping, like you got the detail of the tattoos. You know, like so. What what is it that made you like get that deep into the detail? Because like. There's people out here twisting copper, you know what I mean? But like the unique and outstanding thing that I see is like your detail is impeccable, you know, like, and then them tattoos. So what is it that make you just get 
that deep into the detail. Well, Nipsey, making the, the first Nipsey piece really transformed the level of me twisting copy. Mm -hmm. And it's a story behind that. I ain't going to get a long story. I get a short story. A person wanted a Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle passed. The whole country was was making art in his name and his image, you know, to keep him, to keep, to keep the, uh, what, what was it saying again? To keep the something, continues. to keep something alive. The marathon continues. Yeah, the oh. marathon continues. <laughs> so everybody was, you know, the marathon continuing, and somebody asked us <laughs> to make a Nipsey, and I told my wife, I can't make a person, like, 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 you know, this copper. Yeah, it's like, this copper, not it's paint. It's not a paint issue. <laughs> I didn't want to disrespect him, you know. I didn't want to twist a piece of copper up and say, "Yeah," I didn't, and you know, put it up and say, "There's him." So I didn't really want to. I didn't. I couldn't envision it. I couldn't see it. So I know I could connect to the creativity, but first I need it's a level of visually in your mind you can see it. You know, I have to believe. But my wife, my wonderful wife, believed in me. She spit fire on the team. She didn't say no nice things. Yeah. <laughs> you call yourself the copper king. <laughs> <laughs> I said if you call yourself the copper king, prove it. Yeah. yeah. So it was a challenge. <laughs> but but so that so the challenge was there. So I was pushing my limits now. And I felt it. Same time, this man was loved in the energy and the frequency. The vibration of him, the what the country was on. This was within the first week of his passing. This was before the funeral that I made this piece. So the vibration of him was so high. So I started looking at multiple pictures of him. I like I started to listen to his music. I went into such a deep, you know, like channeling. Like I was starting to channel him through the copper, like. And, and the whole time, I'm just hoping I give him justice. I was hoping that it was, it's a piece that, that if he was alive and he saw it, he'll love it. Or if I gave it to his family members, they'll love it. And it took so much spiritual, it was a spiritual draining of me. To the point when it was done and it was created, everybody wanted one. But we refused to sell him. Like, I refused to sell him. I said, I'm not trying to profit off of him like that. Like, it's just one piece, and that's it. And then I think when his birthday came, we opened it up to a, five. like five pieces. But, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, so, and, but once I made the Nipsey, it made me really think about it like, yo, I can make anything. Like, I could literally so make it's only art. been four made today. So there's still opportunity for one more to be made before you're gonna make any more. Um, <laughs> make any more again. But yeah. Now I think that's a powerful thing though to just speak about the idea of like, you know, knowing you got a talent, knowing that you are a highly vibrational being, you know, tapping into your higher self, but even still like, you know, like even bigger than proving yourself to other people, like the, the idea of having to prove yourself to yourself and to be able to see, you know, when you push yourself to the greater limits, how you can really convince yourself that you got more to offer, you know? Because I've shared some of those experiences in myself, where I like I knew I was capable of manifesting something, but then to see it manifest and oftentimes manifest greater than I seen it was like, dang! I knew I was powerful, but I'm powerful, you know? So I, I think that's a beautiful thing because we know y'all been able to create and present great. All types of different types of artwork through the through the um, copper twisting and everything, but yeah, we definitely seen some some great evolution over the past yeah. year or so. Thank you. So, you know, we call that the God factor. When you at that point where you are creating and you know you're you're channeling this thing and you want it, and then the thing manifests, it comes into reality, and then it's greater than anything you could have measured. Like you can't. You couldn't tally up that the tattoo was going to come out in the face right. You know, you couldn't tally up that it was going to look like him and so many people were going to receive it well. That's not, that's not something that you can tally. 
That's what we call a God factor. But the God factor always happens when you're in tune. You know, when you're in tune with spirit and you're doing what you're supposed to do, all you have to do is be found doing the work. You set the intention first, you do the work, and then the God factor makes it explosive. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and to add on to that was like, it was bigger than, like, there's a lot of just raw talent and wealth within the soul, but we also, like you said, you got to channel the spirit. You got to channel that, that God within. And the brother talked about having to set up a vibe, set up an environment, get involved into the artwork before he even created it. You know, you had to go through a process of just meditating with it, marinating on it, and uh, imagining it before you even picked up the copper to start to create. That's know. right. That's true. And uh, it was a real, like, that was like the most spiritual piece I ever made. Like, it's it number one. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm grateful for the man, you know, what he, what he brought, what he stood for. That shows his grateful. Yeah, 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 what he stood for, you know, uh, him buying his own block, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, him, he, he lived and died on his land, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, this is like so powerful. So just tapping into that energy that he created, you know, I'm just grateful. And I'm grateful to make a piece that so many people, you know, like and love. Do you go to the, through the same type of uh, spiritual channeling in your other, you know what I mean, creative, you know what I mean, spaces as an author, you know what I mean, when you were doing music, when you're editing films or shooting them, do you have the same type of experience? Or what is that experience? Uh, it all depends on what it is. Some is more, that, to me, that was, that was the highest vibration of me channeling, you know, going that deep. I, I don't normally go that deep. But uh, the way my mind works is I could create a whole storyline in my mind and I could see it play out. And then I could see it play out, I could rewind it back and then see it play out a different way. And I have a type of mind where I could, I'm gonna see it, I can see things. So even when I'm twisting a copper, sometimes I might be twisting it one way and then I imagine twisting it a, a go, go to the left and then I think about going to the right and then I think about keeping it straight. And then I make a decision and I go and it all happens real quick. Mm -hmm. So the way my mind works, I'm tapped into to my creativity. I'm tapped into my third eye. I'm tapped into to, to a level of meditation that's on a whole nother level than just being quiet. Like I could be in a room of noise and put my mind somewhere where it's quiet. Mm -hmm. And within all of that, I know I can pull stories out, I can pull out movies, I can pull out art, I can pull out, like wherever I reach, I'm confident that I can pull something of substance out. And one of the main reasons why I feel this way is because I try to keep a clean connection with myself. I, when the, the way I carry myself, I hardly drink, I don't smoke, I don't uh, disrespect my wife, I don't cheat on her, I don't, you know, I, I try to live a, a rightly life. I try to be upright as possible. I try to follow the, the laws of the commandments and all that. You know, I ain't killing nobody. <laughs> I ain't killing myself. So through that of trying to be right, I sleep well at night and I have this connection to the all that I'm blessed with. And the reason why I'm speaking of it is because I want other people to understand it so that they can connect on a higher level. Because a lot of us have connections where you could be on a higher level of connecting to your creativity, and your creativity can feed you. Like me and my wife, we make so much, so much abundance from creativity. We make a living off of just creating, off of being. And if it wasn't Copper Vibrations, it would be books, or it would be movies, or it would be, like, just, cre it don't matter. It, it could be just strictly crystals without wrapping them, it can be so, like, it's endless. We have no fear because we live, we try and strive to live so right that we don't worry about wrong. Well, I'm a little dirty, but he's clean. <laughs> 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 let's, keep, let's get that straight, because I don't want nobody to be like, oh, I thought she was good, you know. I mean, we live a life of balance. I live a life of balance, but I am the balance to him, because he is definitely like, <laughs> all that he says is definitely him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not darkness, though. I'm not dark, but I run in my shadows from time to time. 
But, um, and I just, I just have to be honest. But <laughs> in, um, in, in the beauty of having a talent or an attention, whatever it is, so if anybody's watching and you have a talent, you have some type of skill, the, the first thing you need is belief in yourself and belief in your talent. You know, that's without a shadow of a doubt. And you can literally, if you decide to accept your own and be yourself, you can literally live whatever life you choose to live. I mean, we make a living off of doing what we love to do, and that's to create, you know? And that's because we accepted our own and, and ourselves. We're not, we're not swayed by you should have this type of job, or you should have this type of house, or you should have this type of car, or whatever it is. That's not what moves us. What moves us is the fact that we love our people, we love all people, we accept all dollars, but our sympathies is black, like Nina Simone said. Our allegiance is black, and so everything that we do, our life is revolved around it. And so we make a connection in every effort to connect with our people on that way, and every time we bless. And that's open to everyone. That's, that's free, free game. Free, free, free game. Yeah, Not free smoke, free game. For real though, like y'all really just, y'all you know I mean, got some heavy energy. You know what I mean? And I, and I love that it just pours. You know what I mean? Out of y'all. It was so many different things that I connected with. You said I run in my shadow. You know what I mean? And I was listening to that. That popped in my head like that's going to be a title or something. You know what I mean? But then even as you were talking about like uh, your creativity and, and like the ocean. So I was having a conversation. Um, with Karen from the Center of Visual Arts on the live last night, and she was just asking, you know, how do I get in my creative, what's my creative space like? And I'm like, you know, it's, everything's gotta be like water, you know what I'm saying, I, I find my flow. And once I'm in my flow, like it don't, it don't, I don't know where it can go, the reason why like I don't worry about a writer's block or a block or anything like that, because the moment I even feel like the block is in writing, then I take it to gallery curation, or I take it into, all right, I'm gonna create something else. Nonetheless, keeping that flow. Right. You know, going. You know what I mean? Water is in constant flow. It's right. in constant motion. Right. So I love even that concept. And then the fact that it's just right here on the wall. You know, right here. I mean, the flow is in the building. Right. You know. Right. So like, now is there? When you do, you ever have a, a, a flow block in the copper and have to shift it to another place, or what's that like? Well, no. The block I have is at one time people believe in I should only do one thing. Mm -hmm. So the block came from, from my surroundings. Because I always was a creator. I wrote children books, I illustrated them, uh, and sold them. Uh, so creating always been, been right there for me. But people telling me, if you make children books, you don't supposed to do music, or you don't supposed to <laughs> put your energy over here, because if you don't match the one thing, then you'll just be a jack. <laughs> I don't know, I guess a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Jack of all trades. Yeah. And uh, I was like, nah, the way my mind worked, like, I was, <laughs> I saw it though in my mind, like, nah, it's all related. I need to understand how to do music. I need to write books. That means that's perfecting my storytelling. So when I do a movie, I can put music in the movie. I need to know how to use Photoshop. So when I, you know, draw the book, I can actually put it together at the same time. When I create the album cover or the movie cover, mm -hmm. like I want to be able to create, and I don't want no limitation. I don't want nobody telling me I can't. I don't want nobody stopping me. But a lot of times, the surrounding of us, it don't be the atmosphere to create. It don't be the atmosphere for you to figure it out because you go through ups and downs. That's natural. Even on a level of that, me and my wife uh, create on, we still go through ups and downs within our company even though our company always produce, like always produce, but there's ups and downs even in the production. You wanna say anything on that? No, I was, mm -hmm. I was saying, you know, when you start to, creating art is one thing, but then when you create your art as a business, right? So you run into all sorts of challenges because when you're just creating art, you can just be in the flow. Like, like you said, you can just be in the flow. You're not worried about anything. But then when it becomes your livelihood, mm -hmm. it becomes a different level of pressure, a different level of, and I think that's where some people run into blocks at, or some people get frustrated because business is an ebb and flow. It's up and it's down. You know, we six figures today. 
we wasn't before, you know, we wasn't before then, it was a time we was barely struggling to make it. But I think, I think the most important, the most important, I guess I say everything is the most important. Another important thing is, <laughs> um, is that you stay focused. You stay focused on what you're doing. Um, allow your creativity to flow and if you decide, because I think it's beautiful to take your um, creativity and make it into a business, just don't allow the business aspect of it to stifle your ability to create. And I think that's where a lot of people come to the challenge because, I mean, there's many talented people out here, but they don't necessarily do it as a business. Or those people who take their talent and then they put it in a business, then they get frustrated because of the business aspect. I recommend that if that is the case for you, that you source the business aspect of it so you can create and stay in the flow. Um, um, I like to say something. Um, I'm trying to figure out what words to put this in. A lot of times I don't talk that much. It's like from as far as our company, y'all might see me say a couple of words, peace, peace, and be out. It's because I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. And I like to speak truly, like staying true to myself. I, I, let, I try to let truth pour out of me. So that's one of the ways I connect so well with creativity is I don't, I don't have no blockages. I don't put up block. So I spit, I say truth easily and I pour it out. So this is one of my truths that I believe. I came across a person, he thought he was spiritual because he was more like a tree hugger. And he, you know, he had his, he, he, he cried, you know, he sits Indian style. And he, I'll, I'll filter out everything he's saying. Yeah, so this is kind of, this might be a little harsh, but it's overall point. For, for y'all out there that like hug, hugging trees and sit Indian style and, you know, meditate, I'm not trying to, you know, tear you down, but I'm trying to build you up by saying this. I always said, I said to my wife when I first met her, true spiritualism is when you can marry it with your reality, when you can marry it with your physical. Like what I have done, even though you might not never see me hugging trees, you might never see me in, in that meditation position, you know, but what I have done with, with my creativity is I married it with my spiritualism. I married it. Huh? With your spirituality. Yeah, what she just said. <laughs> <laughs> so my reality is actually built, is partly built off of how I spiritually believe. Like some, some people, they say they believe one thing and then they go to work. And they work be like, one time I had a conversation with a man he was speaking very, very negative against the government. And I asked him where he worked, and he says he make bombs for the government. And uh, he worked, he, he lived in uh, Florida somewhere, he had to go and he make, you know, make power stuff and stuff. I'm like, hold up, what? How you gonna talk about the government when your job is directly connected to working for the government? Like, it just don't, it just don't add up. Like, why you, you have to find a way to be true to yourself? If you, like, we used to, we, we counsel people and talk to people. Some people come to us and tell us they don't believe in marriage in the way of paperwork. They don't want to sign their name to a marriage certificate. And I'm like, that's cool and all if you don't sign your name to nothing. Like, don't sign your name, don't sign your name for that car, don't sign your name for an apartment, don't sign your name for anything. You just go live in the woods. And if you got a woman that will live out there with you, then that's your queen. It makes perfect sense, <laughs> you know, that's real. But if you sign your name on everything else, then sign your name on a certificate too to say that you committed to that woman. Just live true to what you do. And, uh, I, don't, I forgot what the point was. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to get that out, that was burning but, inside nah, you. Nah, I just, it's I just about being true to yourself. Yeah, true yeah. for out of me, so if I had this moment, and y'all let me talk, y'all probably ain't gonna really want to hand me to me more time. But they be like, yo, you be spitting the truth. But back, but uh, yeah. So true spiritualism, find a way to be true to yourself. That don't mean quit your job. But if, you don't, if your job is not true to who you are, then figure out how to maneuver yourself into a, a job that actually works for your, for your level of being spiritual. that's the key to manifestation and abundance. It's authenticity. You know what I mean? It's like really being your authentic self. 
because I saw people like we teach um business we do business coaching, so some of y'all may have booked with us for business coaching. But the um one of the things people do is like, oh, it's gotta be perfect. My setup, my backdrop, everything has to be perfect because I'm putting on a show. But then when you put on the show, you're so worried if something's out of place, if something you you've completely lost who you are. You've completely lost what you're giving to the people. And as we move towards social entrepreneurship, um, a social entrepreneurship uh, reality, uh, so to speak, you've got to, the only way you're gonna survive this is through being authentic. You don't have to get on social media and put on any type of show. Be true to who you are because people love authenticity and they can respect the real. And when people respect you, then they're willing to put their currency behind you. And that's one of the things that I've learned um, most of the time. I, nobody can tell me that they love me or they respect me if they're not feeding me. You know what I mean? Literally. And I would do the same to you. If I love and I respect you, then I'm going to feed you. And that's the reality of the situation. So be your authentic self, another important tip <laughs> to um, living your reality. Because it's a beautiful feeling when you know that everything that you have around you is what you built. It's what you built. You put your blood, sweat, and tears in it. And those are the things that you're willing to die for. <laughs> You know what I mean? Those are the things that you really, nobody has to convince you, let's go march about the things that you built. See, people have to convince you to go march about the things that you did not build. You know, they have to convince you to get on board. But with the things that you actually built with your hands, your blood, your sweat, your tears, your spirit, your energy, you know, your creativity, your intention, nobody has to convince you to get on board for that because you're willing to die for that. That's right. Sure. So I wanted to ask y'all about the, uh, just whatever advice or, or what y'all can share in right, relation to the harmony, you know, the fact that y'all are together all the time, work together, live together, do the whole nine all together, you know. And you know, some people, they got, there's so many people with relationships. I mean, they might not even like their job and can't go, wait to go to work so they can get out of the house for a second and get away from each other. Yeah, they be, they be looking for this. <laughs> it's like I hate my job, but I got to go to work for a second. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so y'all was literally like working, building together before copper corporations. He was telling us about the books y'all was pushing in the streets before, and just the fact that y'all are able to, you know, I know it's probably not as peaches and creamy as it, you know, y'all y'all come out the house with the peaches and cream, but. Like, what is that like to be able to keep this piece of harmony and respecting each other's roles and strengths and everything like that? I think the beauty of it, I think the beauty of it and what makes it harmonious and what makes it work is going back to that authenticity. We don't put on air. If we get it popping at the house, we get it popping right here on the line. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, if you get around us, you see the way it is. But the, the beauty of it is we have an ultimate goal. The importance of building a foundation. You can't start any type of relationship. I don't care if it's a friendship, I don't care if it's a business relationship. If it doesn't have a foundation and you don't have a common goal, none of this wants to sustain you, sustain you when things get hard because things are going to get difficult. Naturally, life is difficult, relationships are difficult. But if you don't have a solid foundation, if you don't have a common goal that you are trying to reach, then there's nothing. I mean, my husband, we never went our separate ways and all of this time. Even if we're upset, what brings us back together is our foundation. We both love business. We both want to be successful. We are successful and continue to be more successful at business. Um, we love our children. We want to build something with our families and leave a legacy. We love helping people. We love supporting other businesses and supporting people. We can't do that if we don't make up our differences. And we are definitely different. He's an Aquarius. I'm a Cancer. I'm a Cancer Sun, Moon, Mercury. It's all water rolling, okay? It's nothing but emotions rolling. And he's a thinker. It's nothing but thoughts rolling 24-7. And so we have to um, find a way to reason, right? You can't say you love somebody and pledge your heart and I do and you can't reason with them. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I've been feeling in my spirit that <clears throat> those that know us, they look at us 
in a from a point of view that's, that became unrealistic. Fairy tale. Yeah, it's like we have a fairy tale love, <laughs> like me and my wonderful wife. We really do, but at the same time, it's not as magical. I mean, it is magical. It's like, how do you put something in its correct in the correct space without without when a person without getting yeah. popping in the car? It's, like, it's like y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so y'all are real people. Y'all got real problems. And yeah, peace, peace. Like, like, like we are not as perfect. Perfect, and our our working together is not as as. It's in harmony, but it's not on that frequency as people think it is. Y'all be having to work your problems out. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. A lot of times, it be like this. A lot of times, she want to go left, I want to make a right. And she want to go left because she's a cancer, and emotionally she feels like left is the, you know, the way she want to go. And, and spiritually, too. I'm probably saying something messed up right now. I want to make a right because I already thought about the path. I know where we're going. And I'm already seeing, like, you know, I'm a seer, so I already picked, you know, mapped out the whole thing. And I'm like, right, she's saying left. And we having an argument, and we're being real. We're not hiding the way we feel. She's telling me why she feels the way. And she's also telling me why I'm always in my head, and this don't make no damn sense. You need, you need to stop being in my head, and I need to come down and, and, and see it her way. And I'm telling her, you know, you need to get in your head. <laughs> Whatever it may be, the, the disagreement, but it'd be a real disagreement, and we have real disagreements. And it'd be like, one time I said it like this to somebody, because they thought we was perfect, and they was going through something in their relationship, and they was just wishing they had our type of relationship. And I was like, but you don't understand our type of relationship. There's aspects of me that my wife wish she could change to today. Like, she wished, like, if she, if, Man, she really do wish she could change me if she could. Because certain aspects drive her up the wall. And that's just a reality that she has to live with. <laughs> There's aspects of me that my husband yeah. really wish he could change. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, but it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, you can only do so much. Yeah. Like, whether it's business, Every partnership. whether it's friendship, your children. whether it's relationship with your children. It'll be one of, the beauty, one of the beautiful things for me is what I had to learn is I studied the relationship. Before, we didn't have all the type of knowledge available to us. We had resources for days. You're always on the phone. You're always doing something. We have books galore that people have invested their whole lives into writing these books. If you can't find the tools to help you negotiate with somebody that you say you love, do you have a serious problem? It's not them. It's you. So that's that's what it boils down to in the end. It's like we want to go right, I want to go left, but how do we negotiate this? True, that emotion's gotta come out. You gotta let it go out. And he's him being an air sign, he's able to look at me and just let the emotion out. Okay, now you done, you good, you good. Now we're going right. And the reason we're going right is because. And so I think that's important to understand your mate, um, understand their planetary positions, understand their numbers, their personality, their environment, where they came from. Research them like you would anything else. You went to school and got a high school diploma, right? They gave you all sorts of information and tests to read. You won't do that with the person that you call your life partner? You won't study them, you won't invest that knowledge into them over and over again, the same way you have to stay up and write that paper. It's the same deal. So it all boils down to what you want. And that's what goes back to your creativity. Study it. Study your craft. Continue to do things. Play with things that you think, um, oh, it might go this way. It may not turn out right. Unravel and do it again. Go another direction. And, and the, to get to the level we on, it, it takes it takes a level of friction. It takes a level of, mm -hmm. of challenging. Like, she challenged me for the Nipsey Hustle. And... You know, I rose to that occasion. Sometimes she might challenge me and I don't rise at all. It's just like, you know, I'm Whatever. good. <laughs> and, and, and vice versa. But our relationship is real, though. And there's aspects, really, that, like I said before, it's aspects that's real in, in every relationship. So people that's looking at us from the outside, wishing they had what we had, understand where, wherever 
you build your relationship at, understand there will always be issues. There will always be where well, y'all don't see eye to eye. Because you don't see eye to eye with your children. You love your children. Sometimes you wish you could just take an aspect out of your child. Like, this, person, this child right here is always crying. Like, I wish I could stop him from crying. <laughs> like, <laughs> or this child right here is this way. Like, you know, but you love them. And you ain't going to throw them away. You ain't going to take them to adoption agency. And like, look, man. He broke you. <laughs> he ain't Somebody gonna do all that. You gonna make it work. You know, you gonna, you gonna teach them the best you can, and also you gonna live with some of the aspects of your child. And that's also in a real relationship. There's things that you cannot change of a person, and you need to stop trying. It's aspects of my wonderful wife. I don't even try to change, even if it's not like the you know the most I'm most excited about thing about her. You know, it's like. The least thing I like about her, even though I love everything about her, but the least thing I like about her, you know, those things, I try not to change, especially if that's her core. Because we also have a core. Like, creativity is my core. One time my wife said, you, like, when you become extra, I, and I actually did the math when I was like, I was always extra. Like, I always, like, always creating, always <laughs> doing something, always planning on doing something. Like, it was not, never time wasn't me an extra. This type of stuff, this is, this is who I am. So, you know, you gotta love me or leave me alone almost when it comes to this type of stuff. And she loves me for it, you know, majority of the time. But sometimes I know I gotta calm down and be like, hold on, I can't be that extra with creating. I need to spend time with my wonderful wife. Like, we had an argument over going on a vacation. Like, I want to go on a vacation, but I want to go to a vacation where they got, like, stones so we can buy more crystals. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go on a vacation where, where you know, yeah, it's like, God, take a vacation. <laughs> what do you mean? Did your heart take a vacation? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, 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 it was an argument over taking a break. And I was like, your heart don't take a break. Like, imagine your heart taking a break. It's called a heart attack. Like, you don't want that. <laughs> like, like, I'm a, I'm a worker. I work, this <laughs> is what I do, I create. So if I'm sitting somewhere, I'm creating in my mind, I'm coming up with a whole new story, so I don't have to switch copper, but I'm always gonna be creating, that's just who I am. But, you know, I have to also tell myself to chill out at times, because if my wonderful wife, she's a woman, she got, you know, woman needs, she want, you know, she gotta be loved on and taken places and, you know, all those things. And it's important for us creators to understand that, like, you know, you have to take time out. So that's like one of the real things that that's going on in our that's relationship. That's a big thing in creative relationships. Now I think about it, like the taking time, because creators <laughs> always want to create. Like everything is about creativity. We got to do this, we got to do that, we got to do that. And the woman's like, spend time with me. Or the other man, you know, is like, spend time with me, spend time with me. And that person just, this is what, how they live, this is how they breathe. And I had to understand that. This is how he breathes, you know what I mean? So I can't, I'm not gonna be able to change that aspect of him. So what I do is I sometimes redirect that energy. Okay, you wanna create, build me a deck You know what I mean? Make me a fire pit. There you go with the creativity. You got to get that creativity out sometimes. And I mean, I've seen, it, I've seen it come to, you know what I mean, fruition. You know, I mean, I, I've seen the deck. The fire pit. I've experienced it. And that's wisdom right there. When you understand and you love a person, instead of trying to stop them and create them, try to redirect it in a way where you can live with it, especially if they're going off on the deep end. Like, look, I can't follow you out there, yo. You got to come back <laughs> and figure out, you know, some breadcrumbs or something to bring them back. Yeah. Right, you want to get work. extravagant, let's get this deck popping then. Right. Yeah, right. for sure. Well, yeah, I'll... Uh, all right, man, y'all gave us a, we got a whole class, you know what I mean? Man, I got like, like five more questions, but I'm gonna let y'all, Yeah, know, I mean, now nah, we gotta get him, uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, Can we get yeah. one more question, man? I like these questions. Nah. nah. <laughs> we, already, we already, we already. Stay tuned for part two and three. Yeah, we gonna have to come back, you know what I mean? I wanna get my mans on the road. He got, he going back to Fayetteville. <laughs> but, uh, nah, this is beautiful. We had a whole, you know what I mean? We got a lecture, you know what I mean? For y'all that's watching. Double back and dissect this. I mean, because it was so many gems, you know what I mean, from your creative space to a spiritual space to your relationship. You know what I mean? So, like, definitely double back on this. You know what I mean, this is called the heart gallery. You know what I mean? And 
this all came from the heart. You know what I mean? What I, the most beautiful thing was I like the aspect of asking the questions, but I love how like y'all didn't really need no questions. Like for real, y'all <laughs> nah, for real, y'all go straight in, and then there was such a crazy synergy that it's like, and yeah, building off of this, like it was a phenomenal display. I mean, almost like like in the beginning, I said y'all were a, a fire example of black love. It seemed like I said that in the beginning or something, you know? But uh. Yeah, we're going to make this transition. You know, I definitely appreciate y'all for tapping in, you know what I mean, and bringing your beautiful art, you know what I mean, in the story, you know what I mean, in this education and enlightenment. Follow us at Copper Vibrations. Definitely, at Copper Vibrations. And uh, when y'all watch this playback, we definitely going to have them tagged in this. And y'all going to see some of the other beautiful things that they do, especially when they tap in on them lives and y'all get to, you know, delve into them gems as well. Um, up next, you know, we got my brother d Sphere. You know what I mean? With all of the most crazy and beautiful art in the atmosphere. So we're going to make a transition from one wall to the next. Um, 